What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. I am Sam, and that is Mike. Today, we're going to be kind of uh, broaching a sensitive topic, and a topic that I would not be thinking about, I would be saying. No. Uh, if you ask me in, like, late, you know, August, that, hey, in December, you're going to be recording a video talking about should the Seahawks rebuild or not. I'd be like, you're a maniac. You don't know what you're talking about. No. And... Uh, it, it's really, it's really come around. The Seahawks have been eliminated from the playoffs. They're five and 10. And it's clear that, you know, the league is kind of feeling that, okay, so the Seahawks suck now. Yeah. And I, I you know, like it, it's kind of weird. Like we have no weight in the league, which is something that I'm not used to having. Like mm. I, I'm used to having like, okay, yeah, the Seahawks they got Russ, they got Bobby Wagner. They're always gonna at least contend. Now it's like the Seahawks. Oh, that's a walk. That's a walkthrough. We just Yeah. The fact that the fact that Nick Foles trotted into Seattle after not starting all year, trotted into Seattle. And it's not like he like dominated us, but those that, that fourth clutched. quarter, he clutched. that fourth quarter was pretty dominant. He clutched that fourth quarter in the fourth quarter. Dominant. There's, I think, okay, this is a whole other topic. I think there's just a whole thing about Nick Foles that, like, he's just a mad player. And then when, like, the bright lights are on, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go be a stud. That's another topic. Mo yeah. Monty ran all over us, right? Monty absolutely killed Well, us. actually, not really. On 30 carries, ran for 68 yards. I, well, did you see what he did to Cindy Jones, though? Well, that's a different story. Anyway. That's a different story. Uh, and like by the way, that, can, that, that Khalil Herbert touchdown. Did you watch what Ryan Neal did on that play? I, I didn't see they, what. They showed the back angle, and Khalil Herbert ran right into the lane. And I don't know what the hell Ryan Neal did, but, like, Khalil Herbert's, like, rounding the corner like this, and there's a guy, and there's a guy two people involved in a block right here, engaged in a block. Khalil Herbert's coming around, and Ryan Neal just goes, boom, right into the block, <laughs> and Khalil Herbert just runs around him for the touchdown. Oh, like, uh, I don't know what the, the hell way, happened. Before we get into the, the heavy shit, Jermaine Fetty false start. And then uh, he recorded and he recovered the fumble. Yeah. That literally the next play. Back to back plays. Jermaine Fetty recovers the fumble and Jimmy Graham scores the game, essentially the game winning touchdown. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't. It, I, that's a all weird, I wanted from the time. game. That's all I wanted from that game was a Jermaine Fetty false start. And I was like, I got it and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, it, um, it, it's, and he also got utterly destroyed on the broadcast. They're like, man, it's a bad day for Jermaine Fetty. Like they, they, like they were just talking about Kevin it. Jenkins was doing pretty decent on the left side. Kevin but... Jenkins was doing decent, bro. By the way, Carlos Dunlap. Oh, oh no, no, it wasn't even Kevin Jenkins. It was, I think, Larry Borum because yeah, Larry Borum because Kevin Borum. Jenkins got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Borum was kind of dominating too. All right, we're not going to get into it. We, I, yeah. I really don't want to talk about the game because I feel like that's not the the thoughts that I have after this game. It's more yeah. so we got to talk about rebuilding stuff. How how are we doing? Rebuild. It? So um, you, as you guys know, the first step to helping a problem is to accept that it's a problem. You have to accept the fact. So if we're going to go into this, we have to know that in some capacity, the Seahawks have to rebuild. We have to just accept that so that we can continue to help the team. So I think. There's a lot of moving parts here with the rebuild. You got yeah. the coach, you got Russ, you got it's a lot of things. Yeah. Usually, whenever you're talking about a team with a rebuild, you don't talk about a team that has one of the most expensive quarterbacks in the NFL that's also an elite quarterback and is your franchise quarterback for the last 10 years. And it's yeah. kind of in his prime, say what you want. He's moving into his prime. And I know it sounds weird to say because he's 33 years old, but most quarterbacks kind of move into their prime twilight years in those mid thirties where now they know everything they need mm -hmm. to know. And unless if you're like Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, like Aaron Rodgers is having the best years of his career right now. Literally just won MVP. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, so it, it's a little, it's a little interesting to see. And I, I, there's a lot of moving parts. And right before, as we kind of get into this, Pete Carroll went on an interview this morning on ESPN uh, Seattle. And he says, listen, we don't need to restart. We have the foundation. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But I guess that means that Russ and Bobby are probably still in the plans for at least the foreseeable future. Yes, I would, I would agree with that. Yes. Then later, which is by later, I mean like an hour ago, it's seven o'clock Eastern right now. About an hour ago, Pete Carroll does a does his, his post-game press conference, like the, the Monday after press conference that he always does. 
And um, he says, oh, when I said foundation, I, I was talking about a philosophical foundation. Uh, dog, what? What does that mean? Uh, uh, establish the run? Is that the philosophical foundation? Just run run regardless of down distance, score, Listen, time in the clock. I don't box. care what players it is, man. We're, we're going to get seven minutes and we're going to win. We're going to go seven minutes of drive. We're going to win 13 to seven. That's unless the kind of it's unless it's foundation. the goal line at the Super Bowl, we're we're running the damn ball. We're running the ball every time. I actually think, I, like, I'm not even joking here. I think there's like a psychological thing when after they didn't run the ball there, P. Carroll's just like, I just want to run the ball all the time, like never throw another interception ever again. I just yeah, think he's, that's this is weird, he, but he got a little skittish. Yeah, got a little so skittish. like you said, we need to reload. That's, yeah. There's there's a lot of things kind of going on here. You got Russ and Bobby getting up there in age. They're definitely and, still great players, but they're not young anymore. Yeah. Um P. Carroll, obviously, what it do with him? What it do, P. Carroll? I just I can't believe I just said that out loud. <laughs> um and uh, I think it, a good example, real quick, I think a good example is if you're looking at a team that has been really good for a while and then had a really bad year. New England last year, right? They were not good last year. They've been and obviously Brady left. It's way different. Yeah. But then they they're they're good again this year. So there wasn't too mm-hmm. much of a gap. And they didn't totally tear it down, right? They didn't totally tear it down, but they got a new quarterback. They reloaded. The draft, yeah. And they spent a absolute ridiculous amount of money on day one of free agency among the likes we've never seen. I think they had like three contracts. I think they had like five contracts in the first two days that were like yeah. 30 plus million dollars. And honestly, and some of them have worked really well. And then you have like Johnny Smith, who I don't even know what the hell he's doing right now. Well, I don't know why they sent two tight ends. Hunter Henry has been a touchdown machine. Hunter Henry and, has been great. And, and Matthew Judon. Gerald, a, a Matthew Judon is like, Fantastic. I think he's the top 10 in sacks or something like that. I think he's the best free agent signing of this. And then season. even Jalen Mills has been like a yeah. really, actually, yeah. he's had like kind of a mini career renaissance playing corner. I kind of predict that because that's the same thing that happened to Stephon Gilmore when he signed with the Patriots. He was always yeah. good on the Bills. Like he was good. He came to New England. He was like borderline best corner in the league. He won Defensive Player of the Year. Right. So right. I mean, the, 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 the I feel like the main question at this point in the season is going into the off season. You need to find out if it's a retool or if it's a rebuild. And then mm-hmm. going into March, whatever, when free agency opens, you need to have that decided. Because yeah. that's going to decide whether on day one of free agency, you're taking calls for Russell Wilson, or on day one of free agency, you are going out and offering the best players in the NFL max con- uh, huge freaking contracts. Because yep. that's the way that we need to think about this. Yep. And I-, I say we get right into it. The way that we're going to kind of format this is we're going to touch on certain subjects, and we're going to give our thoughts, and then we're going to give what we actually think is going to happen. And we're going to have to come to some kind of consensus on what we think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. but we're going to see where we stand. And I feel, I feel like the, the, the main part of this is really going to begin with Pete Carroll. The head coach who seems to, I, I said this in the video that I uploaded yesterday, where he has like this, he has like this weird hand on everything in the organization. Like he's higher ranked than John Schneider. Yeah. I'm sure that even, although Jody Allen is technically the owner, I'm sure that he can probably do more than Jody Allen. Well, and that's, I was talking about this with a friend a couple of days ago when Paul Allen died, right? Unfortunately, when he passed away, Rest in peace. Pete Carroll is now the most powerful man in the organization. I think I really do think so. I really wonder who has the power to fire him. Realistically, it, it, it would literally have to be Jody Allen stepping in and being yeah. like, listen, this is ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not going to take this anymore. You're fired. And yeah. that would be a absolute shocker. I wonder if John Schneider does have the authority to fire him because of the titles there, not necessarily where they typically, rank, yeah, typically, but the titles. GMs are typically the it goes like, it goes like a uh, head coach, GM, president of the team, and then the owner. That's kind yeah. of how it goes. And the president of the team is Chuck Arnold. I don't know where he stands in any of this i don't know if he i don't know what where the power ranks go there i don't know what how how he's involved but he's kind of he signed an extension this offseason as a part of the seahawks kind of ongoing coaching extensions with john schneider pete carroll all those guys so, he Carroll's under contract until 2025 2025 yeah 20, and schneider's under until 27 because he just signed it uh this offseason. i think he sounded like a, i think he sounded like a seven-year deal or an eight-year deal or something like yeah that. yeah something a like huge that. extension yeah and 
frankly, I'm going to be honest. I don't think John Schneider is the problem in any of this. This team on paper is really talented. Yes. And that's exactly what he does. I think this there team is yeah. an extremely talented football team. And like when you're watching them get bulldozed in the last two minutes by Nick Foles and Jimmy Graham, who I don't know what Jimmy Graham has done the last two years, but Jimmy Graham just dead. bodied that. Jimmy Graham, his only purpose on the Bears is just to run like a fade at the goal line and they just throw it. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, there's a lot of times where this team is broken. So let's talk about Pete Carroll. Pete. Carroll and I, I posted a, a tweet yesterday. It was a sc- fake screenshot. The Seahawks have fired Pete Carroll. It's like an NFL notification. The Seahawks have fired Pete. Got Carroll. me excited. I'm not gonna lie. And I had like 60 likes on it, and then there was like these seven people in the comments, like you guys don't appreciate what he's done for this organization. And I know that we have been a very successful organization among the likes, arguably that we've never seen, even with like Mike Holmgren. Yeah. The difference is that Pete, when, when you suck. It really is clear how not good of a coach Pete Carroll is and more so how he's failed to grow with the league. That's my biggest issue with Pete Carroll is Pete Carroll is the oldest coach in the league. And for any Seahawks fans, you know, like he doesn't act like the oldest coach. He's always got a lot of energy. But philosophically, I still think he's stuck in the 80s, 90s, whatever. He just really hasn't adapted to the modern NFL. And Mm -hmm. I think that's a big issue. And to go off of what you were saying about the people saying, oh, Pete Carroll, he's done so much for this organization. I think Pete Carroll is the greatest coach the Seahawks have ever had. Uh, I feel like it's kind of unarguable. It, it, it's it's he unarguable. Is the greatest coach the Seahawks have had, but, at least success wise. But the NFL is a what have you done for me recently business. So if he won a yeah. Super Bowl, you know, what is it? It's going to be nine years ago or no. And you yeah. made it and you yeah. made it eight years ago. Right. That's great. Awesome. I can't that's do fantastic. math apparently. I just, I, I messed up the math. But that's great that we were successful for so long. But recently, these last two, three years, it just hasn't felt like we were contenders, really. I mean, we, I know we... Like, think about what teams have done where sometimes... I, I'm, I'm, I, there was an example in recent history where this happened. And I can't place my finger on it. But it happened when a team was consistently good, but they never made the Super Bowl. And then they fired a coach and then... With their new coach, they made the Super Bowl like the year after or something like that. I can't remember what it is. And oh. it's going to piss me off. Oh, yeah. Now it's going to piss me off, too. I remember watching it in an SB Nation collapse video or something like that where a team is this close and they have to hire a new coach and they get there. My, but my point is, is that the Seahawks in the last six years, as and I'm sure Evan Hill oh, will tell you. I think I got it. John, uh, the Ravens. Harbaugh and Billick. Maybe. Well, no, because Billick won in 2000, so that wouldn't make sense either. Bill- Billick won the Super Bowl. I, 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 I can't remember. I'm. It's gonna bug me. Yeah, all it is. Day. It's gonna bug me all day. I'll come up with it eventually. Philly, but maybe Philly. Philly with Doug Peterson? No, because they fired uh, Chip Kelly. Wait, I mean, Chip Kelly. I mean, yeah. Chip Kelly made, was 10 and six when the year he got fired. I mean, they made the playoffs a couple of times with him. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of an example of my, – my main point here is that the Seahawks in the last seven years have made the playoffs and then they lose in the first round. Yeah. Or they win and they lose. Is that really success? Mm-mm. I would call a successful season if you make the playoffs. I would call it a success if you make the conference championship. Not necessarily win the conference championship, yeah. but if you – but, like, okay, we won a couple games. We, we were one game away from the big one. We'll get it next time. You know? Yeah. It's something like that. But if you make the playoffs and you lose in the wild card, is it – like, the Bears made the playoffs and lost in the wild card last year. They would call that a success because they were projected to suck. But right. with the Seahawks, who has all this talent, you make the playoffs and you lose in the wild card to, to the Rams in your division who absolutely n- knock you down in your own stadium. With a with their backup quarterback, with their with with their backup quarterback who gets hurt, and then you basically have to play another backup quarterback. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, their starter, and then yeah, yeah, this is the whole mess. Jared Goof so, is a backup quarterback, and, and, he, yeah. and he didn't have a thumb. He didn't have a thumb. Like I don't. He's out here throwing so, a ball like this. My main point is, I think Pete Carroll has to go. I think so too. I think Pete Carroll has to go. I, the game is changing, man. Even like Bill Belichick. Is, can, is coaching successful teams without Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. So he's adapted. 
I, if and we saw what happened when the Seahawks lost Russ for those couple games, we could barely put points on the board. Yeah, and I know that that's not technically his job. People are going to say, oh, he's a defensive guy. That's Shane Waldron's fault. Fine. But our defense is the worst in yards given up in the yes. NFL. And you, you could say, oh, well, points scored. We're fifth in scoring defense. But does a great defense give up the most yards in the NFL? No. A lot of that. And I think I do think Seattle is good at on third down in the red zone. A yeah. lot of that is just opponents being sloppy you know, um, in, in the red zone. Also, Seattle doesn't force a lot of turnovers either. Good defenses force turnovers. We really Last don't. Last year, force- I feel like we had a lot of turnovers. I don't know what it is. Last year, I feel like we had a good amount of I feel turnovers. Like this like- year, the only person really getting interceptions is Quandre Dix. He's got five. Quandre has interceptions, and then – Jamal has two. Who else? Uh, Jamal had two. Bobby had one. Yeah, he won against J- Jimmy Grappolo when he just threw it to who him. Who absolutely just – I think, if, I, think, stomach. I think if you get an interception off Jimmy Grappolo, it should count as a half pick. That's just being honest. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's it doesn't just, count. Have we had any corners that have had an interception all year? Sidney Jones almost had an interception. Sidney Jones almost had one. Trey Brown didn't have any. Did Trey Brown didn't DJ? have any? I think DJ, DJ had no. one early in the year. No, DJ didn't, hasn't had any. Yeah, so, like, we just don't force turnovers. Trey That's Flowers cool. didn't have any picks when he played. Um, no. Yeah, I mean – we're not forcing turnovers. So this, this am I, am I, you know, if Pete Carroll's such a great defensive mind coach, why, why is the defense not? Producing? And specifically, he's a defense. He's the defensive back mastermind. What, I mean, what's going on? Listen, I think Trey Brown's going to be great. I really do. I love yes, Trey Brown. I, so I love much. Trey Brown. He plays with well. a swagger and an energy that I just freaking love. I think DJ Reed's really talented as well, but like, Great Sin- defenses don't give up like 400 passing yards a game. Mm-mm. You know, they don't. They, they just don't. And it's different like like last year, right? When the, when the Seahawks offense was scoring 40 a game and teams were just passing because they had to just keep up and you're giving up that many passing yards, that's a little different. And sure, when your offense is having scoring drives that are three minutes each time, like pass, 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 touchdown. That was the Seahawks in like the first like six or seven games last year. Yeah. All of a sudden, but now this year, when you're when you're having two minute drives, but it's a three and out, and then your defense is like, "All right, boys, let's go out there and stop yeah. again." Yeah, you know, it's 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 weird. It really is weird. It is. Very I think weird. Pete has to go. What do you think is really going to happen with Pete? Because personally, I think he's just about as safe as anybody could be at this. I point. The, that's the thing, dude. I think I don't. Again, I just don't know who would fire him. Like, who has the power in that organization? To say, I, I think John Schneider could walk in to Pete and say that he's fired, and I think Pete would be fired. I, th- but again, John, just with the way that, just with the way that power works in the NFL, I think that 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 he could do that. Or if Jody Allen is sick of it, and Pete has said in interviews that Jody Allen is taking this as a one year thing, she's like, "You better fix it next year." Yeah. Which is at least promising to see. Right. So maybe if Pete like really blows for the last two games, like if we get blown out by the Lions or something this week. Please, Jared Goof, end our season once again. Please. I need please, I need Jared Goff. Goff to throw like six touchdowns. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need Jared. I never then, and then Jody Allen to be like, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Get out. End our season again, please, Jared Goof. Please. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I am a Lions Lions fan. I'm a Lions fan this week, hundred percent. So to keep this short, try to get on to the next one. Our contestants for us: fire Pete Carroll. At least we think we should fire Pete Carroll, but we think that he's just about as safe as anybody could. I think he's safe. Yeah, I think he's safe. Once again, leave your thoughts for every single topic we talk about in the comments below. Let's talk about maybe the biggest one of all, which is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. I have a lot of thoughts on this guy. I have a lot of I have a lot of thoughts on this. It can go back and forth because you say, oh, well, Russ, your franchise quarterback. And if you want to have short-term success, then yeah. But my biggest argument is that if if you want to call what we have to do a rebuild, I don't think you can keep Russ and rebuild the team. And I made this argument where I said, you can't keep, like, if you want to rebuild a house, and I mean, knock down the house and start clean, which is what I define as a rebuild. Yes. You can't keep the walls of the house standing. It's mm-hmm. not how it works. Get the sledgehammer and just... And, it and, down. and maybe somebody would make the argument oh, of, oh, Russ is the foundation of the house. You keep the foundation of the house, 
I mean, maybe, but like, I wouldn't call Russ the foundation of this team. I would say he's the foundation, but at the same time, I think if you want to rebuild, you need yeah. assets and Russell Wilson will get you assets. Like he gets and, you. Yeah, like you can't, my, my biggest argument is that you can't rebuild a team and keep your best player who's also your franchise quarterback, who's also extremely expensive. True. That's True. my argument. Yeah, you can't, and yeah. It, no. it, it, like, it can't be classified as a rebuild in that sense. So I think, personally with me, this is a very touchy subject. If we're going along the lines of, let's press the rebuild button, I think if considering that if we go into a rebuild, I think if we rebuild, I think Russ has to be traded. I agree with that sentiment. I don't I think, think Russ should be traded in general, I would say. But I think if we were to go into a rebuild, I say Russ has to go. I think if the higher ups in the Seahawks say, you know what, we're rebuilding, it's we're starting over, you have to trade Russ. Are we there? I don't know. But if, if that's the decision, if the decision is to rebuild, you have to trade Russ. And I have a, I have a proposal for you, Sam, and I want to hear what you think. I saw this, I think on Twitter, I think I saw this. Basically, what the proposal was, you trade Russ to the New York Giants. They have two probably top 10 picks this year. Yeah. They got one money. They got which one from money. the Bears for the Justin Fields trade in the draft last year. They have two first round picks this year. They'll probably have a decent draft pick next year. You take those three picks for Russell Wilson. I think the Giants would do that. And I think the Seahawks would do that. Last year, so to, oh, just to go all over the place, last year it was, it was reported that the Seahawks. Uh, got a call from the Bears. I think it was two firsts, Khalil Mack and Kyle Fuller. I think that was the deal. I think I also heard an offer that was three firsts and Akeem Hicks or something like that. I think I also heard an offer like that. That's a God offer you accept, right? Now the Bears have Justin Fields. I don't think they're going to trade for Russell Wilson. They won't trade for Russ, but now I think the scenario is much more different in the sense that last year we had won the division off a 12-4 and season, which by record was one of our best seasons in recent history. Yes, now you're talking about, yeah, we're coming off of a five, and let's say we end, let's say we beat the Lions, we lose to the Cardinals, we end six, six and eleven. 11. Right. We're coming off a six and eleven year, and I feel like something that nobody's really mentioning in this case is the main reason why Russ almost got traded last year is because he reportedly demanded the trade, and Russ can say all he wants. He'd say, "Oh, I didn't demand a trade. What are you talking about?" Yeah, that was me. I mean, come on. He, I don't think he demanded a trade. I think he was looking into options and wanted it to be known. That I think was- I, I think Russ kind of put the put the idea on the table of, hey, if you want maybe to and you get a great offer. Looking you know, back, it's looking back, like just looking back to where we are right now. The Bears should have taken, or I'm sorry, the Seahawks should have taken the Bears' offer of three firsts. And whatever it was. Well, think about it though. At the time, sure, at the time, in hindsight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the bear, the bears had no. I'm talking about for the for us getting those picks. At the time, the bears had the 20th overall pick. True, true. But and the bears traded up for Justin Fields, which I can goddamn guarantee that John Schneider would have traded back to like pick 50 and gotten six additional second round picks. True, and true. you know it's true. it's something that like it's something you know. But so no, going back I, to my I, scenario, kinda, yeah. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Just going back to my scenario with the Giants. Now we have two top ten picks this year, and we have a pick next year. Here's what I would say we would do: this draft, take in the first round, take an offensive tackle and a pass rusher. Okay. Yeah, second two round, two of the second round, needs. get corners, maybe get another linebacker, beef up the offensive line. Reminder that we'd have a high second round pick. We'd be picking from the essentially a, a first round pick we'd yes. basically be picking a it would be pick 30 let's assume that we and like let's assume like like in real life i think right now we have this we would we would have had the seventh pick the jets have the pick obviously yeah let, let, let's assume that we stay at 7 39 that's yeah. that's it's like really good I, I've, I've heard people on you know broadcast say well virtually till pick 40 45 ish those guys are all guys who almost went in the first round and right. just missed it. Yeah. So yeah, late 30s. It's not like we're picking like 63 or whatever. Right. 
then I would tank this next season because I don't think the quarterbacks are good this draft. So you're going to trade Russ. I wouldn't get a quarterback yeah, this year. Don't pick like Desmond Ritter, Malik. No. Matt Malik Corral, Malik. no, no, no. Anybody like that, yeah. Tank the next year and take Bryce Young if he's available. So yeah. then, then Bryce in that Young scenario, money. Bryce then in that great. scenario, you have Bryce Young at quarterback. You have a franchise left tackle. You have a pass rusher. You've got better corners. You still got DK, Tyler, uh, Jamal, Quandre. You still got, you know, Jordan Brooks. Mm-hmm. That's a good team right there. That is a and really I feel good like team. next year we're also forgetting that there's there's a guy uh, from Florida who I kind of support. They're they're like my team that I support that actually wins games because I'm from Connecticut, so I support the, the UConn Huskies. And if you know anything about college football, you God know damn. that you know that they're not they're bad. They're they're consistently that's, in that's the bottom ten. Yeah, yeah, they're very bad. Um, so Florida's the team that I support that like gets good recruits and and wins games sometimes. So. <laughs> Um, Anthony Richardson is a stud. He's going to start next year. Who's maybe closest pro comparison is Cam Newton. The dude, six foot five has a cannon arm and is crazy athletic, which is funny. Cause that's where Cam originally went was Florida. He originally went to Florida. That is correct. Played behind Tim Tebow. Who, mm-hmm. Um, is by the way, I think that's the first part of the rebuild. Get Tim Tebow on the, we team. need a backup tight end immediately. Sign Urban Meyer as our offensive coach. I know our special teams coach. <laughs> no, as our motivate, head coach. To motivate Urban our head coach. Special first team part of the motivate. rebuild, Urban Meyer head coach. <laughs> Fire Pete Carroll, get Urban Meyer on the phone ASAP. <laughs> uh, but we can't let him slide anywhere else. This is something where it's a do-now situation. But no, yeah. in reality, like, who, who – like, I, I'm not going to start, start speculating, but if I look at – um. Like if I look at like the top prospects for this year's class, I know that obviously you're gonna the first guys we're gonna come to mind are like, oh, Kayvon Thibodeau, Aiden Hutchinson, those guys. Like th- those are the guys who are incredible. We could good. get an Evan Neal. Uh, Evan Neal, who is ridiculously He's amazing. Stud. Tyler Linderbaum, who's ranked as the eighth best player according to Sports Sporting News at center from Iowa, or even like a George Karloftis from Purdue, uh, Demarvin. Uh, Leal from Texas a and I think he just got arrested, so maybe uh, put a put a fork in it. But you know, Sam, we, got... wouldn't even, we wouldn't even have to look at centers if like John Schneider just like listened to us and, and took Creed Humphrey last year. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Maybe if he listened. And to also, us. a guy who I absolutely love is David David Ajabo from Michigan. Yes, yes. I love David Ajabo from Michigan. He completely dominated that Ohio State game. Just some thoughts there, if that does happen. But I think. In a rebuild case, we both say we have to trade Russ. In reality, I think it's more realistic that Russ pushes himself out. Yeah. Rather than us saying, all right, Russ, it's time to go. Come on, let's go. I think Russ is the type of guy. I love Russ Wilson. He's always been my favorite player. He loves Seattle. I just, he loves Seattle. But at the same time, he wants to win. And I think, I was talking about this with uh, McConnell a couple days ago. Remember how a couple of years ago, Oklahoma City Thunder basically went to Russell Westbrook and they were like, hey, we love you, but we're going to rebuild. If you want to trade, we'll trade you. And I think that's a situation yeah. where Russ hey. would say, yeah, exactly. No, that's why I brought the example. I yeah. think Russell Wilson would say, I love this city. Thank you for all that you've done. I want to go win a Super Bowl. And, and they're saying, it was a very say. peaceful ending. It wasn't like, yeah. it wasn't like Russ was like, man, F Oklahoma City. This is some BS. I didn't want to leave. Like they presented it. And I'm sure that, I don't think Pete Carroll would ever in his might right in his right mind on his terms trade Russell Wilson. That, that that's my opinion. But now it's not his team anymore. Now it's whoever Urban Meyer's team. <laughs> Urban Meyer's team, baby. <laughs> now it's I'll Urban put, Meyer's I'll team. I'll put Urban Meyer in the thumbnail. How much you want yeah. bet? <laughs> <laughs> List, what should this youngster for a rebuild? Urban Meyer's Urban thumbnail <laughs> with a huge red question mark on it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing like, that. I'm doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So that's our consensus. I think it's more likely that Russ gets himself out of Seattle. I think Russ yeah. is like, hey, what are, what the hell are you doing? Why did you just, you know, I don't know. Why didn't you just go sign a bunch of people with like the top 10 money that we have in free agency? And they're like, oh, because we kind of want to retool. We want to rebuild a little bit. And Russ is like, oh, what the hell is this? I'm not going to stick around for a rebuild. I'm a quarterback in my prime. Right. Why would I want and, to be around for and rebuild? The Giants would be one team that would be perfect. I think the Saints also. Are you kidding? Do you me? remember? Like, do you remember a couple years back when, like, the like Russell Wilson went on the Jimmy Fallon show or on the Tonight Show? I guess more so. Went on the Tonight Show, and Jimmy Fallon asked him a question, like, "Hey, would you like to come to the Giants?" 
and, and like when all those rumors were going around. Yeah, like when all those rumors, thing. Yeah. And Russ was Russ kind of he didn't he was like, man, I love it here in New York, but I don't think they would let me leave in Seattle. Which yeah. obviously like if you quote it directly without context it doesn't sound that great russ is <laughs> just yeah in, in but, video, but, but obviously like obviously in, in video it's better so where do you think this rebuild heads after next assuming that if the rebuild happens where okay well let's say we're 15 days in the rebuild we've fired Pete carroll and we've traded russell wilson what do you think the next step of the blueprint is for the rebuild for this team the next step if you trade russ Full rebuild mode. You got to burn the whole house down. I would trade DK. I would trade Bobby. DK. Here's the thing with DK. Though. Wow. Here's the thing with DK. Is DK Metcalf a stud receiver who's young? Yes. But I think he would get us. I think DK would at least, at least get us another first round pick. And if you're burning it DK's down. DK two first round picks. DK, at, I think, would be at, 25 at least, in the offseason. Yeah. I'd say probably a first and a second, a first and a third. Something along that. Something crazy valuable. Tyler Lockett, Tyler Lockett would not get us that. I personally, I don't. I don't think we should trade DK. And we should not trade Tyler either because the dead money would be ridiculous after his contract. Well, and and teams, I think Tyler Lockett is so dependent on his chemistry with Russell Wilson that I just don't think it's, he's that valuable to any hey, other team. package him with the Giants. Let's get four first-round picks. Dude, bring it. Anyway. No, I'm um, um, I mean. You have to okay. trade Jamal at that point because you can't be paying 17 mil for a box safety when you're rebuilding. You Okay, so you say that we don't even keep, like, any expensive if guys. You keep we, just, we just total the whole thing. DK, maybe. DK, I might take back what I said about DK. But I, you wanna, if anything, I think, I think if we get rid of DK, I, if I think we get rid of Russ, I think we have to try to prioritize actually making DK the main foundation of what we and that, have in that can be rebuild. completely true i can i can completely see that then you at that point you've got to focus on i think the things. next step is bobby wagner personally for me yeah because you guys say bobby, going yeah. into a contract year he's what gonna be 33 next year mm-hmm. linebackers tend to break down and bobby has not typically been that guy knock on wood but you know bobby he he would be 33 years old playing football for 10 years at a position that is arguably the most contact heavy in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. He literally just set the record, the Seahawks record for tackles in a season. You know how many blows and, to the body that is? And I, and I think he's like four tackles away from setting the total combined tackles record in a season or five tackles away or whatever. From what I saw, I he saw, might, yeah. I saw from stat track or whatever that thing is. I'll look that it up, like I'll look it up while you're talking real quick. I think it said Patrick Willis has the record with 174, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know. Um, listen, what do you think this team could get in return for Bobby Wagner in the off season, who would be very expensive, a very expensive and B going into a contract year. And of course, C, we, we brought up age. I don't think we'd, we want a first round pick. No, 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 unless well, listen, unless if we trade him to a absolute contender, like if the Chiefs come calling, let's say the Chiefs end up with like the 31st pick. Let's say they win the AFC, but they don't win the Super Bowl. They they would probably give us the 31st pick for Bobby Wagner. But yeah. in that case, what's the difference trading Bobby Wagner for a high second than a low first? They're kind of the same thing. You'd almost, I'd almost rather get a second and like a five than, than just a, a late first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just get a second and a five. Um, but yeah, you'd have to trade Bobby. I think if, if we're there and if we're like, all right, burn it down you got to focus on the young players. So I'm going to contradict what I said. you got to have to focus on DK, focus on Jordan Brooks, focus on Trey Brown, focus Trey on Brown. the new guys you would have gotten in the draft. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the D. Eskridge going to have to be big. Well, the question is, what do you do quarterback? I would say, here's, here's what I would, like, this is the plan, I think. And I know tanking isn't a real thing. Like, NFL teams would never be like, yeah, we're tanking. You, you being an yeah, Oklahoma yeah, City fan, yeah, you know they don't walk exists. into they don't they don't know them, they don't walk into the locker room and say, "Hey guys, we're tanking this year." So try to suck as much as possible. Listen, bro, they do it you, like you as an OKC oh, fan know, especially I know they're and they're we not tried, tanking. We tried in that 2020 COVID season. We tried really hard to tank, and we still made the playoffs. Um, and then the next year. Jesus Christ, we were like, get Sam Chris Presti, Paul out of here. Sam Presti's, get out of my office. 
Yeah. yeah, Sam Presti got has like 30 first round picks in his bag. Um anyway, yeah. I think anyway we tank and then we get a quarterback in next year's draft. Well, whether it be well, Bryce well, Young. Well, do you think well do you think we could be like, hey, uh Giants, if you want Russell Wilson, throw in Danny Danny Dimes as a filler. Yeah. I also heard um somebody say like there was another there was another I, I heard something that the, I heard something that the Eagles would be at the forefront of, of any trades going on sauce. They season. also have two first round picks and have a young so if you want to say, hey, two first rounders and Jalen Hurts, that's not terrible. That's not bad even. I, I don't think they value Jalen Hurts that much, frankly. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think I think we could probably get three firsts and Jalen Hurts and maybe throw him like an additional fourth or something. Well, because like Gardner Minshew came in and was and dominated in his game. And obviously, game. if they get Russ, why would they give a single damn about Jalen Hurts? Oh yeah, no, absolutely not. Unless absolutely. if they're calling teams like when Russ is like kind of like on the line and it's getting done, if they're calling teams like, hey, we're gonna get Russ. What do you want for Jalen Hurts? Do are you interested in Jalen Hurts? What do you well? And, and also, then, like I said, the Giants are a possible team. Giants and Eagles are in division. So John Schneider could say, hey, you know, the Giants, they're, we're really close to getting this done. Eagles could get desperate and say, all right, three first and Jalen. Yeah, Jaylen. if you ever watch Moneyball, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. That's what I was Billy Bean's on the phone. Yeah. He's got like a couple people. He's like, hey, man, I don't know. We got to get, we got a deal for this guy over here. You might want to get something done real quick. Call me back, hang up the phone, pick up the other phone, with the other guy. Hey, I got another team calling. You might want to hurry up. That's what the, uh, that's what the Bears did this past year with um, Justin Fields trade because the, the Vikings wanted to trade up to get Justin Fields and the bears like last minute, like snuck in there to get fields. Cause they knew the Vikings want fields, but that's a whole different topic. But I think that's not even the worst case scenario. And then quarterback in that case, you'd have Jalen hurts. Well, I personally really like, maybe it's just cause I'm now. And fan. what if Jalen hurts comes in with DK and with Tyler Lockett and he's a stud. What that's if what like, he shows legitimate growth? And then all of a sudden we, if we have a high pick, we don't even have to spend it on a quarterback, which is probably ideal because the Seahawks fans have never had to go through this. Relying on a guy who you pick in the first round, I don't know if you've seen it a lot. It's hell for a lot of teams. Like, you, act like Lawrence, I'm, you act like I'm not a Bears fan too. <laughs> yeah, Trevor Lawrence has been, like, no offense, Mike, Justin Fields has not played very great, well this year. In the time no, he not has this played. year. No, yeah, not this year. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, there. I think, leads the league in interceptions. Zach yeah. Wilson, he, he's had flashes he's like yesterday, but you know, and then obviously Mac Jones, but everybody projected Mac Jones to be the best quarterback coming out of yeah. college. It's also a situation Lance, thing. Who's just, I don't know what the hell is going on. A right lot now. of things with, with quarterbacks, it's a situation thing. So with the Seahawks, if you get Jalen Hurts in and then you do, you, now you have a franchise left tackle, you have good pass rush, you have this, 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 this. Yeah. You have DK, if you get you have Evan Tyler. Neal and David Ajabo. Yeah. Absolutely speculating. You have, you have superstar running back Rashad Penny. Don't think we don't think we didn't talk about that. The dude's a stud. I first of all, time out for a second. I never hopped off the Rashad Penny wagon. You Sam is my witness. I never hopped mm-hmm. off. I knew he was good. Mike and posted a video like halfway through the year, like Rashad Penny needs to save the season. <laughs> and I see him posting that. Like it was a solo <laughs> video because I was very busy at that point and yeah. I would get notifications. <laughs> I didn't I would I would never have any idea what my, about what's Mike Tykema. Like I would get out of football practice and look at my phone. It's like Rashad Penny needs to save the season for the Seahawks. I'm like, what? What is he talking about? What is what is he talking about? Hey, they called and, me a madman, Sam. Well, I mean, he hasn't saved the year, but he's played really well. He's been and, a stud. Uh, he's been a stud. Yeah. So listen, right? Anyway, so you have now you have Jalen Hurts or whoever you draft. The likelihood of him being much better, assuming also we fire Pete Carroll, the likelihood of being of him being a good quarterback grows exponentially. And let's say even we get situation. a guy like. Nathaniel Hackett, Eric Bieniemy, two guys who are coaching the best two quarterbacks in the NFL, arguably, or even Byron Leftwich, who's I, those, are the, yes. those are the three guys who are coaching the three best quarterbacks in the NFL at this very moment. Yep. And, you know, I mean, I would love any three of those guys personally. So would I. Um, so would I, know. Sam. So and, would I. okay, so here's – well, let's kind of keep discussing this because we, we have the three guys who are kind of at the main question of this. Pete Carroll, we say fire. If we do rebuild, we say trade Russ and Bobby. Mm-hmm. And this is all in the case of whether the Seahawks are rebuilding, who do you keep, who do you get rid of, what do we do, so-and-so. 
Yeah. So, so let's say, so let's kind of construct this deal. Let's say that, because I want to kind of solidify what this rebuild might look like. If we solidify, let's say the trade is Russ to New York for three firsts and Daniel Jones. Hypothetical, completely hypothetical. We, we have no sources on this. We have nobody telling us, hey, the Seahawks Adam, love Daniel Jones. Adam Scheffner uh, reported that the Seahawks actually are in love, quote, with uh, Jalen Hurts. So, uh, oh, the Seahawks. Just getting reports, Seahawks love Danny Dimes. They think he's very talented. Ian Rappaport just tweeted, I'm pretty sure, deal is close to being completed by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, if the NFL is creating an exemption, it would create so much media frenzy. The NFL yeah. is creating an, exe- an exemption for this because they – they just like Roger Goodell's like, I don't even care, just just do it. We'll set it through. I need the money, I need the <laughs> money, you know. Send Russell Wilson to New York, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. The media would go ballistic. And okay, so listen, isn't Russell right? Wilson a Yankee also? Like, that just works, he right? Played for the Yankees in spring training. I mean, come on, deep, come on, deeply that hurtful works. to me as a Red Sox fan, but uh, deep. I, I hate the Yankees, but I will make a, an exception for one player and one player only, yeah. Aaron but <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Nestor Cortez is uh, my guy. You know, John Carlos like, his day, but you know, whatever. Mm, um, okay, Mike. Uh, <laughs> okay, so listen, right? We're getting to this point where in the rebuild, we have all of a sudden, out of nowhere, two top 10 picks. A young quarterback who might benefit from a change of scenery. I'm not gonna say that Daniel Jones is gonna all of a sudden be our franchise guy. I, swear, I want him to like commit like four turnovers a game. We go like one in eight, we're one in sixteen, and just get Bryce Young. Do you remember the That's year the where the Panthers got Jimmy Clausen and they're yes. like, "Hey, this might work." They were absolutely. <laughs> Ridiculously bad, and then they get Cam Newton with the first overall pick yeah. next year. I mean, that's the consolation prize. You know, it's, it's the same like, thing with same thing with yeah. like the Bengals. Our new head stuff. coach, Urban Meyer, is going to come in say, yeah, exactly. "Listen, Daniel Jones is the guy. Next year, it's Bryce Young season, baby. It's yeah, yeah. No, DK's absolutely. could be on the sideline. Like, what are you doing, Danny? Throw Dude, the ball. <laughs> have you been seeing? I don't know if you watch Alabama. You see the deep balls that Bryce Young throws. Mm. Oh." Mm. Can you imagine DK on a go route? Bryce Young in the backfield making 80 guys miss because the right side of his offensive line is still dog shit, but he's got a good left tackle. Yeah. Making 80 guys miss and just bombing it to DK. Oh. So it's worth it's worth noting that this website that I'm looking at here has Matt Corral ranked as the 16th best player in the draft. Personally, I, I, I don't, don't see it that way. I don't like any of the quarterbacks in this draft, really. Like know. Sam Howell and um, Desmond Ritter. And... If Desmond Ritter beats Alabama, though, which please God help me if they beat Alabama. But if they beat Alabama, he might be a top five pick. Being like, completely honest, what if like what if they what if they win the Natty, and he's a stud? He's gonna go first round. He's gonna oh, go top good. ten or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I think he's top five actually if they win the Natty. To be honest, because because the whole thing mm. with him, it's like yeah, he's got the abilities, blah blah. blah. All of his winning is like, oh, it's against crappy opponents. He beats Bama and then he beats Georgia. Yeah, I don't know. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Please so like, God. looking at what they have, looking at looking at like what they have here, like for later round quarterback guys, they have like Bailey Zapp from Western Michigan, and they have uh, Cameron McKee, I think. Oh no, Tanner McKee from. I wouldn't Stanford. take a quarterback. I wouldn't take a quarterback in this draft, to be honest. Even if, if you trade Russ, even, no, if you trade Russ, even if it's like a Davis Mills situation where it's like, oh, he's or it's like a Kellen Mond. More specifically, Kellen Mond was available in the third for the for the Vikings. They're like, and hey, what the hell? We'll take a shot on it. Like if if like a Carson Strong is available in the third round, do you say, and hey, what the hell? Why not? No, you got to build up. In my opinion, you got to build up the offensive line. You got to build up the corners. You have to make the team take a quarterback away from a second. You got to make the team as good as possible because mm-hmm. then when you get a good quarterback, when you get whoever next year, or you trade for somebody, whatever, then they have a great team around them. Uh, that's that's just what I think. You have to focus all your energy on offensive line, especially all your energy on on guys like that. To be honest, now yeah, if we're looking at like a running back, because Kenneth Walker is, uh, Kenneth, I know there's a couple of really good running. Yeah, backs. I mean, if uh, and Pete Carroll would obviously be the guy to draft a franchise running back. Uh, um, he already has one, and Rashad Penny. He already has one. Sorry. Well, he was on a contract year, and when he signs a max deal, we're not going to be able to keep up with that. Yeah, when he goes and signs with the Chiefs for fifty million a year, 
they're they yeah. just have, they're just paying two players. They're just gonna pay Mahomes and Rashad Penny like two billion. Combined. And they're and they're gonna go sixteen or seventeen. They're gonna go seventeen. No, yeah. I mean, looking at this, there's actually not according to this, there's not a lot of great running backs on the table. I'm talking about I'm talking about next year. Oh, next year. Yeah, I'm talking next, about next oh, year. Next, yeah. Is Kenneth I mean, Walker? Do Kenneth Walker declare for the draft already? I don't know. Uh, here it says there's a couple guys here where it just says like assuming that they uh announce that they're going in then then they're great but like i don't think that guys like like is jordan davis going into the draft this year i think so i'm not sure i'm yeah. not sure because i think he probably would have declared already because he was kind of like a phenom at some yeah. points this year true um i'll look it up but anyways kind of wrapping up where do you think this team stands in a situation where they're going into a potential rebuild, where do how confident are you in the in the tools that we have, the young guys and the and the trade assets we have? How confident are you that this rebuild could be successful? Saying that we do go into one, I think if you the success of the rebuild, I think relies on how self aware they are. If they tell themselves, "Listen, we need to rebuild. We're going to burn down the house," and they stay committed to that. I think this rebuild could be very successful. And obviously you need to hit on your draft picks. Yeah. You can't take busts, um, which has been a, an issue. But I think if the Seahawks, the worst case scenario, I think for the Seahawks would be, oh yeah, we're rebuilding. Oh, we're not. Oh, we're rebuilding. Oh, we're not like half and yeah. half. You yeah, have there's going to be something where like, deal. I think it would really be, if Pete does stay and we do go into a rebuild, it would be John Schneider being like, let's trade Russ. Let's get all these assets and build for the future. But that would be like Pete, like, Oh, let's sign Taron Armstead for a max deal and free agency or something like that. Like something weird where it's yeah, like, no. listen, man, we're in a rebuild. Yeah. We're in a rebuild. Like, let's not, let's not treat it like it's some kind of, oh, let's win now kind of thing. Cause that's when rebuilds fail every single time. It's yeah. that's when rebuilds fail when the team is like, oh, we got a lot of great prospects, but we're going to go out and sign this guy who for some reason, is you know we're gonna pay max money to i i don't know i don't know man i'm it's, it's uh, gonna be a very interesting couple of months here to see because typically months. they call it i think they call it black monday i think is the monday after the nfl season ends a bunch yeah. of coaches get fired um mm -hmm. who knows you can might only be a crc if coach for gets fired that day oh my lord Oh my hey, lord! You know, you know the end of um, you you you've seen Star Wars, right? You know the end of the Phantom yeah. Menace when like the gun games and everything are like celebrating and they're like singing this song. That's gonna be every Seahawks mm -hmm. fan on Cyber Monday, if, if, um, on Black Monday if uh, Picard gets fired. Cyber Monday. Yeah. Picard's like, I bought a new laptop, baby. <laughs> Dude, Picard doesn't even know how yeah. to use the internet, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you don't know how to use it's it. Like, what's my, my guy told me to go on pro football reference. How, how do I log into my hotmail? And Russ is like, dude, <laughs> oh my God. Because they're running Alexa, an offense. check Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like tapping the screen. He's like, does this work? They're like, no, yeah, that's, like, that's a laptop. Why is it touch screen? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so Russ, I just, uh, John sent me an email with important Russ news. I can't get to it. <laughs> yeah. It's a, the email says we're trading Russ, and it gives like those automated replies, like "sweet, cool." <laughs> yeah. <it's> like <laughs> amazing. <"Cool." laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, remember? And that's the last thing I'll say real quick before we log out. You know how they have like Zoom calls and everything because the COVID protocols. I guarantee, like every time Pete Carroll's like mic is off, and like he just like like nobody could hear him. He's going through the game plan, and it just <laughs> says on a whiteboard like "run forty times," and just nobody could hear him. <laughs> he just gets booted. he's like. He's just sitting there like. And they're like, coach, your mic's off. He's like. He's like, oh. So we're going to run a halfback dive uh, 15 plays in a row. <laughs> it cuts back. He's like, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. He probably has like a dog barking in the background. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And all of a sudden his camera turns off and he's sitting there just like. How do I fix this? I can't. I can't he's, see myself. On he's screen. lagging like a motherfucker. <laughs> I can't oh, see myself on the screen. He's like, I, oh, yeah. He's got like some cover in his yeah. camera. They're like, hey, can you guys see it? 
like, now, Coach, you got your camera covered. He's like, oh, okay, okay. All right, we're back. <laughs> he's like, I, I just like to imagine, like, his camera turns off. And then they're like, Coach, your camera's <laughs> off. You need to fix it. And then it cuts to him. He's like, he's like. Uh. <laughs> oh, there it is. I got yeah, it. like, the worst angle. He's, like, here. They're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god, that's funny. Uh, all right, boys. I think I got my camera set up. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, pretty hey, much. Low key, that's probably Kyler Murray on every Zoom call he's ever done <laughs> in his entire life. <laughs> Coach, uh, for personally, I like the game plan this week. I don't, I'm not digging it. I don't. I'm not feeling it this week. So, Coach, we had some under center formations. I think I just can't see over the guy's head. So let's just run everything <laughs> I, from the gun. <laughs> yeah, I can't see over the guy's head. I need you to run everything from the gun, and then you have like. And then, and then you probably have guys like uh, I don't know, even like probably DK is in is in calls like so. Coach personally, yeah, I, shirt I, off, kind of shirt do, off. You just shirt off. just like just like coach personally. I think you should throw the ball at me more. <laughs> like I, I bet it's really hard for DK to argue for his case on Zoom. And he's like, Coach, throw me the ball more, please. And Pete's like, All huh? right. He's like, huh? Okay. I can't, I can't I think hear you. I think I can't coach, hear you. Coach, you need to put your volume on. What what button is that? Uh, hello? Oh nope, that's the end call button. Just, and then the zoom ends. <laughs> zoom ends. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this up. Give us your thoughts because we really want to hear from you on what you think we should do with this. Because everybody's gonna have varying opinions. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. We're gonna see you in the next video. Peace mm-hmm. out. Peace.